that actually about nine of them were built. It was this phenomenon that enabled Victor to transport logs which were heavier than water down his log flume without touching the sides. Now these logs were known as sinkers because normally they were heavier than water and they dropped to the bottom. But because of this centripetal, this involutionary, this inward moving from the outside to was the inside spiral movement, the densest part of the water mass was in the very center of the flow and the logs being denser had to occupy the densest position surrounded by the immediately denser water, the four degree water. And so in moving down the log flume uh, there was a suction created in front of the log because the, the coldest water was accelerating which actually sucked the log along in its wake. Periodically because of course eventually these different water temperatures mix and tend to become a uniform temperature Victor used to allow some water to drain out and at the same point introduce what he called energy water which was very cold water from an adjacent spring or stream uh, which had a temperature of about 4, 4.5, 5 degrees centigrade in order to reintroduce this central charge, central um, mass of very cold water which would continue to accelerate. And this is really how the log flume worked. There were other factors involved which relate to the way the water was caused to rotate in anti-clockwise vortices on left-hand bends and clockwise vortices on right-hand bends. In order to do this, Victor had his workmen uh, nail slats at, uh, at angles around the outside of the bend, the outside surface of the bend. And the water encountering, encountering these slats was imparted either a clockwise spiral or an anti-clockwise spiral. So that the effect of this was when it emerged to, at the surface, the log was always pushed away from the bend. So that the logs passing down this flume never touched the sides. The flume was therefore never damaged in its use and nor were the logs and they arrived in absolutely impeccable condition. And on the first day that it was used, one of the criteria which determined whether Victor was to be paid or not is whether the flume would deliver a thousand solid cubic meters of timber in one day. Uh, in the first day of operation it delivered 1600 cubic meters of timber and Victor Schauberger was paid and everybody else, all the, all the experts were curious at the success of this because it showed that somewhere in their hydraulic theory there was a great error, a great misunderstanding of water and Victor used to say in this regard how can you possibly understand how water, a living substance uh, can behave when the only place you test it in is in laboratories instead of out in nature where then water acts in, in, in relation to nature's laws and not the laws that you have contrived in your places of research. Victor constructed a reservoir of water at the top, at the head of the flume and when the time came for opening, on the opening day uh, the experts arrived and saw the construction of this, this basin, holding basin and said that it was too far too flimsy, it certainly couldn't withstand the pressure of the water and so on. And Victor gave them no answer and went down and stood right in the middle of the wall opposite where the water was going to flow in. And then he gave the signal by firing two shots of his carbine to signal to allow the water to rush in, which it did with tremendous force and volume. And Victor said to the people who were gesticulating, saying, come back, you're going to be killed. He said, it, what does it matter? If I'm a fool, then I'm going to be swept away and so will my theories at the same time. But I believe in what I'm doing. And so he stood looking over the wall, watching this w water flow in. And the water actually flowed in around the sides of this egg-shaped basin. And when they converged at the far end, then they produced a counter wave which moved back in the direction of the inflowing water which was in this instance about four meters high full of mud and rocks and things and therefore exerted a counter pressure against the incoming water and the egg-shaped holding basin held and the experts were absolutely dumbfounded why should they have done this and they then asked him where did you get the idea for this basin and Victor said well 
a common chicken told me how to do it. And finally, when uh, they calculated the strength of the wall statically, uh, they were found to be 12 times stronger than they need have been in order to resist the inflow of water and to be able to support the basin, uh, the sides of the basin, when it was full. So this log flume is an example of how we might construct systems for moving water where there is a continual alternation of movement, of swaying movement, with different vertical flows so that the water is able to regenerate itself and to cool itself. Preferably these should be enclosed so that there is also no access to, to the water from the sun and uh, from, from extra too, too much heat. They timed a block of wood flowing from the holding basin down to the mill in the early morning when the water temperatures were about 8 or 9 degrees and it took 29 minutes to cover the distance. Later in the afternoon, they got the same block of wood over the same distance and the water temperature had by this time risen to about 14 or 15 degrees and the wood, block of wood took 40 minutes to cover the distance. So that it shows that with increasing heat, water flows more slowly. So this process was employed in his log flumes and it is a basis by which we could redesign any new water conduits which have to be constructed in this country. There are other systems which probably could be used to improve uh, what is there already and that is the uh, building in or incorporation of veins in, so we say, an open channel which would cause the, vo the water to rotate as soon as it hit, it hit them, that it would m make the water rotate or make a double spiral movement um, down the center of the channel which would again allow water at least to breathe and, and reoxygenate itself and to cool itself to a certain extent. But this, the, the flowing in straight trapezoid channels which is the general system of moving water according to modern hydraulic theory um, physically kills water until what arrives at the other end, the point of use, is virtually a water corpse apart from the fact that uh, it's also been chlorinated and uh, the chlorine, while it does remove bacteria and other sort of unwelcome organisms uh, will also finally s sterilize the blood from people, of people who drink it all the time um, and research has shown that 18 uh, percent, percent of bladder cancers and 9% of um, intestinal cancers have been caused by, rectal cancers have been caused by the consumption of chlorinated water. So when we drink chlorinated water we actually uh, harm our immune system and we drag it down to a level where it's more likely to fall, the, the body is more likely to fall victim to disease. Uh, so there's a great, there's, it's very important um, to begin to em employ systems or to convert existing systems into ways of, water, of moving water which follows the law of uh, governing the flow of water takes temperature into consideration, takes the, the alternating pulsating movement of water into consideration because this is a substance which is a living substance and it cannot impart life unless it is itself alive. So as something alive, we have to make sure that whatever system and whatever materials we choose to reticulate it allows water to breathe. In 1938 in Nuremberg, Victor Schauberger re-examined Lord Kelvin's water drop experiment to determine the static charge in falling water. Uh, Victor wanted to demonstrate uh, that water does, in its falling, generate charges. This is a device. The arrangement of it was first um, designed by Lord Kelvin about 1880-85. Um, and he called it his influence machine because it uh, demonstrated the influences of fields. In this instance, static fields and positive and negative fields.